this tutorial, we're going to add a touch event to our app. Specifically, we're going to be able to tell when a user touches a sprite, and we're going to increase the score when that happens. As a starting point for our app, we're going to start with the project that we built in our last tutorial that moves a sprite around randomly on the screen. You'll recall that that mash view that we created in that app extended the standard view class from Android. In this particular app, we're going to need a more sophisticated view class called the surface view that we're going to inherit from. As a reminder, the surface view class contains another object called surface holder, which actually contains the canvas. This use of surface view and surface holder will allow us to manipulate the sprites on our screen and detect when they're being touched by the user. Getting back to our code, we need to add a couple of state variables to deal with our new surface view parent class. Specifically, we're going to add an instance variable to contain our surface holder and another to contain our canvas. Inside the mash view constructor, we need to initialize our surface holder. This getHolder function belongs to the surface view class that we're inheriting from. By accessing the holder object once here and initializing our local copy of holder, we will not have to use this holder method in, again in our methods. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the callback method that's going to allow this class to figure out when the surface view is done building the canvas. We've now used our anonymous inner class structure to create a callback function that belongs to our holder. This method, surface created, is the one that's going to be executed when the surface holder is done finishing building its canvas. To make sure that the game does not start before the surface is created, we're going to take our countdown timer start method call and remove it from the end of our constructor and place it inside the surface created method, which is guaranteed to only be called after the surface has been created. The next thing we need to do is to add a touch capability to our current class. Here, I've added a set on touch listener to the current object. This on touch method will be called every time the operating system senses that the user has touched the screen. Inside this method, we need to detect if the finger is landing on a sprite currently being displayed, and if so, we need to increase the score. In the previous version of the app we had built, we had set the coordinates for X and Y of our random sprite location using uh, local variables. But we're going to need to refer to this X and Y now throughout our app, so we're going to turn these now into state variables. Inside the onTouch method, we've added code that tells whether or not the user has pressed on a sprite. Recall that we can use some simple mathematics to figure out if the finger, shown in red, is located on a sprite whose boundaries are indicated by the black rectangle. In this if statement, we are checking to see if the finger has indeed landed on a sprite by checking the boundaries of the sprite, and if that is the case, we're printing a toast message to the screen saying that the sprite was touched and where the location was at which it was touched. Before we can test our app, we need to add one more line of code that will allow this class to draw every time we call the invalidate method. By default, most sophisticated view classes have their drawing capabilities turned off as an optimization. By calling this setWillNotDraw method and setting the value of the flag to false, that will allow the current view, which is the mash view, to draw every time the invalidate method is called. Here is the app running. Notice that when I click on the sprite, I get a toast message saying that it was clicked on. But if I click somewhere outside of the sprite region, 
I get no such message. Eventually, after the 10 second timer expires, the game over message appears on the console.